Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. It's definitely been a while since we've posted a video. Uh, Rick was actually hospitalized for five days uh, last month and we've just been kind of taking a break from YouTube and not really watching any of our favorite channels or live streams. Um, but we're gonna get back into the swing of things because we definitely miss our YouTube family. But uh, right now we're just kind of in this little season of healing and rest. Um, I'm not going to get into why Rick was hospitalized just because he's actually thinking about um, maybe doing a video on that in the future. So basically, I just want to talk to you guys about my experience and, and things that I went through while Rick was in the hospital and share some helpful tips and advice on what I learned to help you be better prepared for an unexpected hospital stay because I definitely was not prepared. So I'm going to be referring to my notes a lot during this video because my number one tip is write things down. Um, you might think that you have a sharp memory, but when you are overwhelmed and stressed and tired and hungry, your, your routine is messed up, uh, you're going to forget things. And, and most times it's always like that important thing that you really needed to remember. So my advice is to get a little pocket size notebook and write things down. Um, all your questions, um, the answers that the doctors give to you, the names of your doctors, your nurses, your case managers, any business personnel that you deal with, like with insurance um, issues. Um, it's important to have this information written down um, for future reference because you will go back to it because um, you're going to need some information. Write down all um, the tests that were done in the hospitals, um, lab tests, CAT scans, x-rays, ultrasounds. Write down the results. Um, I know that everything is electronic uh, nowadays and we have access to like patient portals and um, my chart, um, but I still believe in hard copies because, you know, systems go down and then you can't access your records. Be your own advocate. Um, most doctors do their rounds in the hospital like around 8 a.m., um, and visiting hours usually aren't until 10, at least at the hospital that we were at, visiting hours were from 10 to 8. So by the time I got there, I, there was no doctor. I, I couldn't ask any of my questions. So what I did was I wrote all my questions down and then I spoke to the nurse and, and asked that the doctor come back when they have a chance. Um, that way they can answer my questions. Tip number two. For the love of God, stay off of Google. Google will have you knocking on death's door over a paper cut, okay? <laughs> um, I know that's an exaggeration, but if you don't have to be on Google, just stay off of it. Don't try to diagnose or self-diagnose what's going on. Um, leave that up to the doctors to let you know what's going on. Um, I had access to Rick's patient portal and I was following along with all of his tests and the results that were coming back. And I do thank God that I have been in the medical field for a while. Um, I'm not a nurse or a doctor. I'm a medical coder. So I, I do understand medical terminology to a degree. Um, but there were some words on, the, on those reports that I, I didn't know what they meant. And so I would Google the, the words just so I would have kind of an idea. Um, so if there are some medical terms that you don't understand, I would say, you know, go ahead and, and Google, you know, that so you can have a better understanding. Um, but sa save your questions for the doctors so they can explain to you exactly what's going on. Next tip is to buy um, a medical journal or make one. I prefer to make one because it's cheaper. Um, not only is this great to have during a hospital stay, but it's also good to bring to your doctor's appointments, especially if you see multiple doctors or specialists. Um, what I did was I just bought a cheap little three ring binder. I labeled it medical records and 
the green section on top would be Rick's information and then on the bottom would be my information. And what I did was I printed out, um, and these are free printable uh, reports, doctor visits you can write down all the doctors that you see their names their addresses um, their their telephone numbers i also printed out a medical history form so you can write your name on it any current medications uh, that you're taking the dosage how frequently you take them the reason why you take them um, the doctor that prescribed them um, any past surgical procedures that you've had or major illnesses, your vaccine records. This is really important because how many times do we go to the doctor and they're just like, oh, when was your last hernia surgery? You know, what year? You know, I mean, who remembers that? So it's just, you know, you can pull that right out and be like, here, make a copy. Um, if you need to log your blood pressure, you can print out a blood pressure log. And that way you can keep track of your blood pressures at home. Same with your blood sugars. You can have that documented. And this is a hospital discharge form. And this will, um, you can fill out the date you were admitted, the date you were discharged, why you were admitted and the treatment going forward. And just a record of your dental visits. The date you went to the dentist or oral surgeon, you know, what teeth you've had pulled. That way you can stick this all in your medical records and it's all documented. And yes, I, I understand that we have access to our medical records electronically. But you know, with everything that's going on in the world today, don't think for a second that hospitals are not going to get cyber attacked or the grid's not going to go down. We don't know what the future holds. And the, the hospitals and doctor's offices, they don't have hard copies of anything. So use this time now to access your, your patient records and write down everything, your, your, your history, your diagnosis codes, your medications. That way you have something um, to show, you know, okay, here's my medical history. I can't emphasize enough how important that is to print out your medical records now, just to have it on file. That way you have some kind of a reference to go by and so do the doctors and nurses and pharmacists okay it's very very important number four um when you're visiting your loved one in the hospital bring your own food it's cheaper uh, than going down to the cafeteria and and buying food and and water and whatever else you want to eat um, it, it's that way you don't have to leave the room and you can just stay there, you know, with your loved one, you know, and eat when you're hungry. And it's also food that you like. If you're able to, um, take the stairs. Okay. Rick was located on the second floor and it's faster than using the elevator. Okay, because the elevator, they got to stop like at every floor. Sometimes you actually have to get off the elevator if they're moving somebody um, that's in a patient bed that takes up the whole elevator. Uh, so if you're able to take the stairs, you'll get to the room a lot faster. Plus, it burns off a little bit of, you know, stress while you're going and you're burning calories. <laughs> and definitely the stairs will let you know how in shape or out of shape that you are. A little out of shape. <laughs> um, tip number five, you can learn a lot of skills just by watching the nursing staff take care of your loved one. Um, I learned how to change the sheets in the bed with Rick still in it. You know, don't be afraid to jump right in there and help out the nurses. Um, you know, as long as they, they let you help, learn what you can. It, it takes the burden off the nurses a lot be as helpful as you can be within your own limits. Um, 
Rick always had a habit of uh, kicking the, the bed alarm, uh, not on purpose, but he was a fall risk. So they would have the guardrails up and the bed alarm on. And every time he tried to move, if he accidentally kicked the guardrail, the bed alarm would go off and then the nurses would come running in and, you know, knowing that I was still in there. And so I asked, how do you turn off the bed alarm? Because he's just, he's not trying to get out of the bed. Um, so they showed me. And so anytime that I was visiting and he would, you know, set off the alarm, I would just, you know, turn off the alarm. That way the nurses can focus on what they're doing. Um, I, I let the nurses know I will be here from 10 to 8. So, and I am only going to press that call button alarm if I absolutely need you. And, and, and they knew. So they, they were very, very grateful um, that I was there to, to help, you know, not only my husband, but to also help serve them as well. Anytime Rick had to use the bathroom, he couldn't get out of bed. Um, so I grabbed the urinal and held it where it needed to be and let him go to the bathroom. Um, it's just stuff that, that you do. Um, and also, don't flush the urine. I, I would keep it and set it on the shelf because when you're in the hospital and depending on what they're looking for, um, the amount of urine and the color of urine is important. And the nurses will document that unless they tell you otherwise. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just flush it. So that's important to, to keep the urine just in case. Your loved one already feels exposed and vulnerable um, because nurses and doctors are coming in and out of the room, poking and prodding in places that they just shouldn't be in. <laughs> um, so if you're able to just help um, give your loved one a sponge bath, um, help brush their teeth, help them go to the bathroom, anything, um, it eases their stress and takes away the embarrassment of, of having a stranger do that for them. Other responsibilities that I had to take care of outside the hospital um, was putting gas in the car. Do you know how to put gas in the car? To be honest, I've put gas in the car maybe two or three times in my whole life because that's just something that Rick always took care of. And I understand putting gas in the car is not rocket science. Um, but you know, I was a little nervous about putting some gas in the car just because it had been so long. Um, and then on top of that, um, because the temperature outside has been, you know, getting colder. He was in the hospital and my, one of the car lights goes on saying that the tire, uh, air pressure was low. I have never put air in the tire. I don't know how much, you know, so I, I panicked a little bit, you know, and, um, I was at work and I went down to the maintenance department and I was like, you know what? My husband's in the hospital. He usually takes care of this stuff. I don't know how to put air in the tire. And the guys took care of that for me. So, so that was great. But learn how to put air in the tire and how much. Um, take, uh, I had to take care of some finances. You know, there's some bills that Rick actually takes care of online. Um, and thankfully, the only, this was what I was prepared for. I have the username and passwords of everything of the bills that we pay online. Um, but do you, you know, make sure that you know, you have a list of all your, you know, credit cards and bills written down uh, when they're due and, and that you know whether you pay for them, you know, by phone or by internet. Um, so that's important to have written down. It is no secret that we have healthcare staffing shortages. So be respectful. Um, to the nurses and to the doctors and, and everybody that comes in all the way down to the person that cleans your room. Um, I understand that you're stressed, but so are the nurses and doctors. Okay, they work very long hours and they're very underappreciated. Um, they're human too. They, they have feelings just like us. Um, they have stress in their life that's outside of work. You know, they have problems too. Um, so yelling and screaming at them, it, it's just not cool. Um, you need to pick your battles um, and do what you can do to help take some of that stress off uh, the nurses. Um, as long as your loved one is being taken care of, 
and they're not being neglected, um, there's no reason to scream at the nursing staff. Okay, I, I've heard other people in other rooms do that and it, it just, it, it wasn't good. Um, and to be honest, I didn't like our charge nurse, okay? I, I thought he was very arrogant, uh, had absolutely no bedside manner. Um, I didn't like his attitude, but you know what? He was on his A game and he knew what he was doing, okay? I'd rather have somebody that's arrogant and has no bedside manner than somebody that's just loving and caring and just doesn't have a clue and they're lazy. Okay, anytime I needed something, he was on it. And all the nurses um, that were under him, um, they were great. I mean, they, they had all the care and, and, and bedside manner and stuff. But I wasn't going to demand a new charge nurse, okay, because he was very attentive and I knew Rick was being taken care of. And like I said, you just need to pick your battles. Finally, know that it's okay to break down. It's okay to cry, okay? Um, it's a good release and it's just not good to hold in. I, I cried a couple of times, um, not in front of Rick, just because I didn't want you know him to feel stressed or, or anything. Um, but there was, my first breakdown was when he wheeled, they wheeled him out of the room and took him down to get, I believe it was a CAT scan. And I'm sitting there in his empty hospital room. And I just had this overwhelming emotion. And I just, I cried. Um, and I'm, we're Christians. And I prayed. I, <laughs> I basically grew up in church. I went to Bible college. I have never prayed so hard and so much in my life than those five days for Rick, for his healing, and um, just for strength and comfort. Um, sometimes as Christians, we, we want to look like we have it all together, and, and we don't want to show weakness, and we don't want to ask for prayer. Um, but reach out to your friends and family for prayer, okay? And, and I know sometimes we, we don't want to be known as that, you know, clingy Christian that, you know, will ask for prayer over anything under the sun, you know, like they'll call or text you and be like, I got a paper cut, you know, pray for my healing. How about you just put some Neosporin on it and a Band-Aid, okay? Um, but, you know, serious stuff, don't be afraid to reach out um, to your friends and family. I actually reached out to uh, two of my uh, YouTube uh, community members, um, My Mother Spark and Vision Preparedness, um, two people that I've never met, but we've followed them for, you know, a couple of years now, and they walk the walk. Um, they believe in the power of prayer, and I reached out to them as well. And I'm like, look, you know what, we're, we're struggling here, and um, I, I, just, I just need you to pray for, for me and for Rick. And they did, and I know they did, because I, I, just, I just felt, I, I felt the strength and the comfort and the peace um, over me. I, I know that Rick felt it. You know, prayer is pow powerful and prayer works. Um, even if you're not a praying person, it, it's, it's not going to hurt you to say, God, please just help me right now. I, I, I feel lost. I don't know what to do. Um, it's just, it's, it's important and just know that it's okay to reach out to people. You don't have to do um, anything alone. But let the nursing staff know when you're leaving for the day. Um, that way they know that, you know, your, your husband or, or loved one is in the hospital room by themselves. Okay. And then they can be more attentive and just know that nobody's there. Um, very important. Just let them know when you arrive and when you're leaving. Um, and when you're discharged from the hospital, know that when they say that at eight in the morning, um, it's going to be three to four hours before you actually go, okay? It's a process. Every doctor that's seen you, they have to sign off, um, you know, and like I said, you know, they're busy. So just expect to, you know, you're going to go home that day, but uh, it's going to be a few hours. And then finally, when you're at home and you're settled in, you know, after a few days or a week, send a thank you card. 
to the hospital and to the floor and address it to the nurses um, and doctors. Um, if it's in your budget, uh, send, um, you know, a tray of cookies or donuts, you know, if you want to, but, but at least a thank you card. And I think that nurses um, appreciate that the most because they, they feel appreciated and they know based on what you write in that card that they made a difference. And that's the reason why they got into healthcare in the first place. Um, so very important, at least send a thank you note um, because it just, it means a lot. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some helpful tips and advice. Uh, that way you'll be better prepared. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. There's my man. <laughs> See you guys later. Yeah.